Harry, do you know why Professor Quirrell couldn't bear to have you touch him? It was because of your mother. She sacrificed herself for you. And that kind of act leaves a mark. Oh no, this kind of mark cannot be seen. It lives in your very skin. What is it? Love, Harry. Love. Let me give you a clue. The happiest man on earth would look into the mirror and see only himself exactly as he is. So then it shows us what we want, whatever we want. Yes, and no. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest and most desperate desires of our hearts. Now you, Harry, who have never known your family, you see them standing beside you. But well, remember this, Harry. This mirror gives us neither knowledge or truth. Men have wasted away in front of it, even gone mad. That is why tomorrow it will be moved to a new home. And I must ask you, not to go looking for it again. It does not do to dwell on dreams, Harry, and forget to live. You see, sir, I, I couldn't help but notice certain things, certain, certain similarities between Tom Riddle and me. I see. Well, you can speak. Parcel tongue, Harry, why? Because Lord Voldemort can speak parcel tongue. If I'm not mistaken, Harry, he transferred some of his powers to you the night he gave you that scar. Voldemort transferred some of his powers to me. Not well, intentionally. But yes. So the sorting hat was right. I should be in Slytherin. It's true, Harry. You possess many of the qualities that Voldemort himself prizes. Determination, resourcefulness, and if I may say so, a certain disregard for the rules. Why then did the sorting hat place you in Gryffindor? Because I asked it to. Exactly, Harry, exactly which makes you different from Voldemort. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. A child's voice, however honest and true, is meaningless oh. to those who've forgotten how to listen. A mysterious thing, time. Powerful and when meddled with, dangerous. Sirius Black is in the topmost cell of the Dark Tower. You know the laws, Miss Granger. You must not be seen. And you would do well, I feel, to return before this last chime. If not, the consequences are too ghastly to discuss. If you succeed tonight, more than one innocent life may be spared. Three turns should do it, I think. Oh, by the way, when in doubt, I find retracing my steps to be a wise place to begin. Good luck. Dementors are vicious creatures. They will not distinguish between the one they hunt and the one who gets in their way. Therefore, I must warn each and every one of you to give them no reason to harm you. It is not in the nature of a Dementor to be forgiving. But you know, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times. If one only remembers to turn on the light. No spell can reawaken the dead, Harry. I trust you know that. 
dark and difficult times lie ahead. Soon we must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. But remember this. You have friends here. You're not alone. Today, we acknowledge a really terrible loss. Frederick Diggory was, as you all know, exceptionally hardworking, infinitely fair-minded, and most importantly, a fierce, fierce friend. Now, I think, therefore, you have the right to know exactly how he died. You see, Cedric Diggory was murdered by Lord Voldemort. The Ministry of Magic does not wish me to tell you this, but not to do so, I think, would be an insult to his memory. Now, the pain we all feel but this dreadful loss reminds me and reminds us that while we may come from different places and speak in different tongues, our hearts beat as one. In light of recent events, the bonds of friendship we made this year will be more important than ever. Remember that. And Cedric Diggory will not have died in vain. You remember that. And we'll celebrate a boy who was kind and honest and brave and true, right to the very end. Oh, Harry. You need to shave, my friend. <laughs> you know, at times, I forget how much you've grown. At times, I still see the small boy from the cupboard. Forgive my mawkishness, Harry. I'm an old man. You still look the same to me, sir. Just like your mother, you're unfailingly kind. A trait people never fail to undervalue, I'm afraid. Once, there was a young man who, like you, sat in this very hall, walked this castle's corridors, stepped under its roof. He seemed to all the world a student like any other. His name? Tom Riddle. Today, of course, he's known all over the world by another name. Which is why, as I stand looking out upon you all tonight, I'm reminded of a sobering fact. Every day, Every hour, this very minute, perhaps, dark forces attempt to penetrate this castle's walls. But in the end, their greatest weapon is you. Just something to think about. Help will always be given at Hogwarts, Harry, to those who ask for it. I've always prized myself on my ability to turn a phrase. Words are, in my not-so-humble opinion, our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. But I would, in this case, amend my original statement to this. Help would always be given at Hogwarts to those who deserve it. Do not pity the dead, Harry. Pity the living. And above all, all those who live without love. 